Today we welcome four inductees. The College of Business and Economics at West Virginia University launches hundreds of graduates into the world each year. And we can only hope that they will mimic the achievements of those inductees we recognize tonight. The role of distinguished alumni was developed to celebrate the successes of our graduates. These four individuals are honored through this induction by their alma mater because of their highly successful careers in the US and around the world. They are representatives of the countless careers BNE has molded in areas such as business, academia, and government, and the impact they have uh, had on our region, our state, our country, and our world is significant. We are happy to recognize these, uh, their outstanding achievements, and we are honored that they are part of the BNE family. Those who comprise the role of distinguished alumni are special people. Inductees must, of course, be college alumni. They must be 10 years post uh, uh, degree. They must uh, have passed all the tests and have a transcript. <laughs> and they do, we testify they do. And must have distinguished themselves by success in business or other life activities, regionally, nationally, or internationally. The college has helped mold countless of successful careers in business and government and academia, as I said has uh, careers uh, who led to the creation of, and growth of great enterprises and the development of opportunities for the well-being of West Virginia and, uh, and the people around the world. Our inductees today are a wonderful reflection of those successful careers. Now I'd like to invite Adam and uh, Bailey Lynch to come to the podium to introduce our first inductee, please. Hello, my name is Adam Lynch. I'm a senior finance major. And my name is Bailey Lynch. I'm also a senior as a business administration major with an emphasis in supply chain, and we are originally from Geneva, Illinois. It is our pleasure today to introduce the first inductee into the 2014 College of Business and Economics role of distinguished alumni and our father, Jim Lynch. Um, our father, Jim, is a senior vice president of supply chain with accountability for all manufacturing logistics, engineering, planning, and integration of H HSE for PepsiCo America's beverages, including Pepsi Beverages Company, Gatorade, Tropicana, and Naked Juice. In addition, our father has responsibility for the PepsiCo America beverages hot fill strategy in Latin America and franchise operations in Central and South America. Prior to assuming this role in December 2010, our father served as Senior Vice President, NAB Supply Chain, and PAB, PAB Hot Fill Strategy. Jim, our dad, has a BSBA and an MBA. He is currently a member of the University of Michigan's Ross Masters of Supply Chain Management Corporate Advisory Council. Quite a mouthful. A member of Accenture's Chief Supply Chain Officer Network and Chairman of West Virginia University College of Business and Economics Supply Chain Advisory Board. He has also served on the Engineering Advisory Board of North Carolina a and University. He and his wife, or mom and dad, Lisa and Jim reside in Mooresville, North Carolina with their three beautiful star-struck children, <laughs> William, <laughs> Bailey, and Adam. Please join us in welcoming our father, Jim Lynch, in the role of distinguished alumni. Well, that was a great uh, introduction. Thank you so much, and it's a pleasure to be with you all tonight. Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you, this meant a lot to me to be here. I uh, was actually on the West Coast just uh, last night. I took a red eye to get back here. So I've been up for 30 hours. So if you see me looking a little glassy up here, just kind of you know, know that it's a lack of sleep and nothing else. But uh, you know, um, as a native West Virginian, it uh, means a lot to be up here. And um, I would uh, tell you that uh, when I was growing up, my parents made it very clear you were always going to go to college. Education was huge in our family. And uh, I remember my, uh, my father stating that you were going to the university. So he made it very clear that that was the place to go, and that was, of course, WVU. So, you know, as I think about that journey and, um, you know, what I learned, the, um, the people uh, really made the difference. The experience of, you know, learning other cultures, being able to work with other people, a tremendous opportunity for me. And uh, it really taught me how to be successful in business. And as I think about my 30 now year career, uh, starting out from a campus interview here at WVU, it has really been that educational foundation that's made the difference. Now I have to tell you that um, 
it's been ebbs and flows. Uh, there's been ups and downs through that 30 years. But the one thing that's always held true is that foundational education of business and economics. And as I think about you know, the next chapter uh, in my life, I'll take that experience into whatever that becomes. Uh, I was talking to a few of you uh, in the crowd earlier, and it was really important to kind of hear that some of you are actually at retirement. That's actually one of my goals now is to get to retirement uh, after 30 years in business. But again, it's, uh, it's a great honor to be with you all tonight. Now, I will tell you that as I think about um, uh, kind of the, what this means to me, it is something that um, you know, was important enough for me to take that 30 hour uh, uh, red eye back to get uh, here on campus. But also it means a lot as a native West Virginian. Now I will have to tell you Dean, there's only one thing that's a little uh, kind of frustrating and I didn't want to bring it up tonight, but I thought why not uh, since I'm here. But as a, as a native West Virginian and as a uh, individual that bleeds blue and gold, it's really hard writing that out-of-state tuition check every semester for these two. But now, Adam and Baylor, there's only one more, right? Just one more left before that goes away, right? But, uh, you know, as all kidding aside, uh, again, it has been a tremendous experience here. And uh, that's why uh, Lisa, my wife, who is a uh, graduate of the School of Human Resources and Education, the Speech Pathology Department, and I decided that it was important to give back to WVU. And recently, we have contributed to both of our colleges. And uh, the future of WVU and its students mean a great deal to both of us. Now, in addition, we've also made plans to contribute to the Irwin Stewart Society. And for those that know about uh, the Stewart Society and how it works, Lisa and I won't actually get to see those dollars being used, but we do know they're in good hands to help maintain that high level of education for Mountaineers yet to come. Now, I can't think of an honor that means more to me personally than being elected to the WVU College of Business and Economics role of distinguished alumni. I'm humbled to be included in such an incredibly distinguished group, and I am beyond grateful to be thought worthy of such recognition. So as I close, uh, in working in supply chain for over 30 years has taught me one thing over and over, and that is every link in the chain does have a greater purpose. So as I think about the link that I had studying here at WVU to those that came before me and those that would come after me, I know that that link will continue. And I'm very proud that West Virginia University and the College of Business and Economics is destined to go to great things. And I will continue to be a link to that for years to come. It's a great place. It's an honor to be a part of it. And it's a great honor to be with you all tonight. Thank you for being here very much. Um, before we uh, continue, uh, just to illustrate how important uh, GM has been to our college. Uh, from the very beginning of our supply chain program, uh, we called upon GM to help us uh, as, as the chairman of the advisory board. I'm very pleased to say that then subsequently, uh, you know, uh, he and his wife contributed to the program. We also got a major gift to st start, uh, start the program. And now we have two professors. In fact, they're both here uh, tonight and they're terrific professors. And it so happens that those two professors are teaching you, right? I think, uh, or both of you, or one of you, uh, in supply chain. So that's very, uh, very interesting because in addition to that, I think uh, we're promising that we're gonna develop a supply chain, a master of science in supply chain in the next couple of years. And this is gonna be a great program. And one of the professors, John, he has just been awarded uh, in fact, he got, what, two or three A-plus publications in the past uh, month, and was awarded uh, the best uh, article published in supply chain for the past, uh, what, three years? Uh, right. So uh, we not only start on a very great note, we start from a level of excellence that's very special. So, uh, Jim. Uh, you are in good hands, and you're going to lead us into the future in a big way. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're going to go to our next inductee, and uh, would you like to come up, please? Hi. My name is Richard Engel. I'm a finance major from Charleston, West Virginia. It's my pleasure today to introduce our second inductee into the 2014 College of Business and Economics role of distinguished alumni. 
A native of central Pennsylvania, Bill Sheedy earned his Bachelor's of Science from West Virginia University in 1988 with a concentration in finance. After leaving Morgantown, he enrolled in and received his degree, for, uh, his Master's of Business Administration from the University of Notre Dame. Sheedy worked at First Nationwide Bank as a senior financial manager before moving to Visa USA. At Visa, he became the executive vice president in 2007. In his current role, Bill is responsible for the company's corporate strategy, mergers and acquisitions, government relations, and Visa's business in Europe. As a member of Visa's senior executive management committee, his role is further responsible for charting the company's strategic direction and driving growth. Sheedy resides in the San Francisco Bay Area with his wife, Patty, and their three children, Jack, Emma, and Daniel. Please join me in welcoming Bill Sheedy into the role of distinguished alumni. Thank you, Richard. Uh, like Jim, it's just a truly an honor to be here today. I, uh, I can't really, it would be impossible for me to convey how, how um, extraordinary the, uh, this is, how special it feels, and, and I'm, I'm happy to be a part of this and join my, uh, the other honorees uh, in, in this. I think uh, it's an absolute pleasure to meet them, hear their stories, and you know, we'll always have this bond together. In May earlier this year, uh, I was also deeply honored to give this commencement uh, address at uh, the b and &E School graduation. Uh, for that night, Zito said I could talk as long as I like, as long as I kept it under 15 minutes. Uh, I came in just over 14 minutes, and I'm pretty sure I saw Gordon Gee twitching to cut me off. So uh, I will keep it much briefer uh, tonight. It was, um, but seriously, it was quite a gift that Zito gave me uh, to, to give that commencement speech. It, it, I'll always feel indebted for the experience. And uh, frankly, I'm just very, very happy it's over. It was one of the more stressful things I've ever done. Um, so I, again, I promise I'll brief, be brief today. My only desire really is to convey my appreciation, both to Zito and to uh, my, uh, my kind family who are uh, nice enough to come. Second to my family, uh, my four years in Morgantown shaped me in innumerable ways, um, for which I'm deeply indebted. My fellow honorees, and I suspect each of you understand that this is a uniquely special place. I, I'd like to take uh, this opportunity to thank Dean Sartorelli. I was in California um, building my career uh, with my family, and you know I've been there more than half my life. I got disconnected from West Virginia, and I've been able to reconnect over the last few years, and that means a lot to me. So I want to I want to thank Zito for that. Um, I also say personally, I come from a, a fairly large Irish Catholic family. Uh, where each of us was imbued with regular but healthy doses of humility. Uh, it means the most to me that my mother, sister, uh, and family are here, uh, and the process of keeping my ego in check will recommence as soon as I sit down. So, <laughs> my wife and three children send their best regards from California. Uh, they would have loved to have been here as well. Unfortunately, it just wasn't possible. So uh, just quickly, a little bit about um, my thoughts coming into today. I, as uh, Richard mentioned, I graduated from West Virginia in 1988. can't believe it's been 26 years. Uh, but as I reflected back, the first thing that occurs to me is how the four years helped me understand the importance of personal relationships, balancing the demands of an academic schedule with the many, many, many opportunities we had here to have a good time. It, um, in preparation for today and on deeper reflection, uh, another theme emerged for me that I'd like to just um, explore for a second, and it's about the invaluable culture that exists here and the diversity of WVU. Uh, I'm absolutely convinced that the culture of this place, three decades ago for me, uh, was in many ways ahead of its time, and it's ever-present as I stand here today. Um, I'd like to talk about diversity. Uh, today, most organizations, mine included, talk a lot about diversity and embracing the contributions of people who are different from you. Um, if you spend any time on the topic, you hear gobs of statistics measuring diversity. We do it in our company. We form lots of employee groups to uh, focus on diversity. And, and why do we do that? It's not because of uh, anything that's philanthropic. It's because it's smart. You take the best ideas of smart, hardworking people who look at the world in different ways, and you create an environment that fosters their collaboration and they'll succeed. So what does this have to do with West Virginia? Well, as a land-grant public university, 
I, I would stress to you the diversity of this university is its strength. Uh, a statistical analysis of the student body might not show it uh, to be the most diverse, but statistics lie as we know. Personally, it was the diversity of the students and the faculty with whom I was exposed in Morgantown that gave me the confidence to know that my views were valuable even if they were different. I was encouraged to take risks, speak up, and be heard, and the culture here reinforces that. That you may not be the smartest person in the room, but if you know how to positively engage others in ways that build trust, you'll, build, uh, you'll pull the best out of the people around you, and as a group, you'll succeed. That's a big part of business, and that's what a big part about the business and economics program here is at West Virginia. The university is a collection of people who are authentic, hardworking, and smart. Uh, and the people here embody that. Um, it's always been a wonderfully diverse mix of people from urban and rural backgrounds across broad socioeconomic spectrums. Uh, and that's our point of differentiation. So as um, graduates who have had some success, we have a debt to West Virginia, uh, to WVU. We must help to invest in better tools for our students and uh, attract the best educators. And we're happy, honored to really work with Zito to help accomplish that. Uh, but we'll do so with the confidence that the true essence of the public university and the diversity of the perspectives that are shared and shaped here, it's our strength. It's what gives us and our graduates the best opportunities to do extraordinary things, and I'm happy to be a part of it. So thank you. Um, I've been a, a customer of Visa for many, many years. In fact, all my life, and I still keep a Visa. I do have now uh, 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 one MasterCard, but it's uh, really connected with uh, United, but I'm looking to get a, a United Visa in. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, the next uh, person we're going to honor is uh, Mr. Stephen uh, Walker, and I think I have Danielle Ferreira who's going to do it. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Danielle Ferreira. I'm a junior marketing major from Bergen County, New Jersey. And it is my pleasure today to introduce the third inductee into the 2014 Class of West Virginia University College of Business and Economics Role of Distinguished Alumni. Stephen Walker received his bachelor's in marketing in 1967 and his JD in 1971, both from West Virginia University. After graduation, he entered his family's business of Walker Machinery, a Caterpillar Incorporation, dealer for, West for Western West Virginia and Southeast Ohio. After positions in sales, marketing, and corporate administration, he became president and chief operating officer in 1983 and remained so until the sale of the business and his retirement in 2010. He is a former member of the Board of Trustees of West Virginia Wesleyan College. He was a member and a former chairman of the WVU College of Business and Economics Visiting Committee, and he remains active on the Board of West Virginia State University Foundation, where he has served two terms as its chairman. He has been married to Diane Hunt Walker, a University of South Carolina graduate, for 45 years, and they have two adult children, Brad of Charleston, West Virginia, and Mary of, Char of Charlottesville, Virginia. Please join me in welcoming Stephen Walker into the role of distinguished alumni. Well, when you know it, my family uh, all said, yeah, we'll be there. They're not here. <laughs> they, everybody got a, a, a change of plans. I said, that's fine. But my wife uh, was not a big fan of Morgantown. I drug her in here from uh, University of South Carolina, where it was blue sky every day. And uh, we almost got divorced before we got married on the city limits out here. And uh, <laughs> But she did teach Latin at the Morgantown High School for two years. And she's probably uh, the only Latin major in college that I know of. And um, But anyway, I want to thank um, Zito. I really do thank you and your staff uh, and, and the college for this um, uh, award. And I really, really appreciate it. And, and uh, you just don't know how much I do. Uh, one more thing about my wife, Diane. She did tell Zito apparently, 
that you better get all the money you can from Steve now because after he's gone, you don't get a cent. <laughs> I think she was just joking there. You know, uh, you know uh, uh, I started here in 1963 at uh, West Virginia University. It, it, it seems like a short time ago uh, in one way, but it seems like a long time ago when you start counting the years. And uh, I was, uh, I have to say, I was uh, privileged to be one of the few people who signed up. At that time, they called it the College of Commerce, if I remember. And one of the few people who signed up originally to go to the School of Business or the College of Commerce. Most of the people were pre-engineering, pre-law, or pre-something else. But there was a small group of us that when we graduated, there, was, <laughs> there weren't very many of us, but we were the same. But I really valued that education that I got, and I struggled hard on some courses. Uh, I loved marketing, loved marketing, and it taught me so much. Uh, County and I did not get along. Uh, uh, in fact, I flunked counting to Jay Johnson, anybody remembers, and Jay was such a nice man that when I took it over from him, he made me stand up the first day to tell everybody how hard the course was. Uh, but, but I did pass. But I really didn't understand accounting until I went to law school, and it hit me one day for accounting for lawyers. I said, oh, okay, great. Um, but looking, I, when I drove up here today, I haven't been here for oh, several years, a couple of years, really. And uh, I cannot believe the construction going on. I've read about it, but I, I cannot believe, what is it, almost $2 billion worth? One billion, I'm sorry, but it, it, it's got to be more. It's got to be more than that. And I was disoriented actually disoriented and I got here there were 7,000 students one campus basically and they had I think the creative arts not creative was a creative arts center out here is that what it was yeah and maybe the ag school maybe and that was it and then they built the twin towers and life as I knew it changed also life as I knew it um, dating uh, that year my, my senior year they changed he had had the women in at, used to have them in 11 o'clock or uh, on weeknights and maybe 12 on on Saturdays. It became 2:30, I think, on, on my second semester of senior year. So if you had to pick your date up early, you had to be with her for six or seven hours. It, <laughs> I mean, it was um, it was a big change, I tell you. <laughs> and now, yeah, boys and girls live in the same dorm. So, I'm a born too early um, <laughs> but the, the uh, uh, what I used in business a lot every day was uh, econ I took a lot of economics courses and I used it so much and also uh, uh, labor econ well labor economics uh, regular economics and it was just um, um, really helpful for me and uh, I'll always uh, be appreciative for what I learned. And in the marketing end of it, uh, I love the case study method because uh, I went to uh, law school. Of course, that's all law school was, was case study, basically. But putting together a uh, corporation or figuring out what went wrong with that corporation from a marketing standpoint, a business policy standpoint, uh, and a lot of it was basically marketing. It taught me so much. And uh, I, I, I really enjoyed the marketing. My brother, Dick, uh, who was uh, CEO of our uh, our firm, and my boss, if you will, was an accounting major here, and um, he uh, we split it up. He did the accounting, I did the marketing, although we cross trained a little bit uh, as much as we could on the stuff, but that really helped. Uh, and I, I was glad to say, about 2002, I was telling some people here that we decided to get out of the business because well, we well, did a study that our little area of Caterpillar, we were one at that time, one of about 65 dealers in North America. And I read the tea leaves that the, uh, our customers were merging, the big customers, the coal customers were merging. They were not building big roads anymore in the state of West Virginia. And our population was only about a million uh, from uh, s uh, uh, Southeastern Ohio and West Virginia. So we call Caterpillar, which is a great company. If you haven't studied Caterpillar, study Caterpillar is a great, great company. And they said, okay, we'll get you out. So they end up uh, having the Kentucky dealer buy us. And that was uh, 
uh, really, uh, we got out a good time. We got a good time, and you guys benefit from a little bit. And, um, but I, I, again, I do appreciate it, and I'm sorry that uh, uh, my wife could not be here tonight. And uh, Zito, thank you so much. You've done so much for this school. Our next inductee is uh, Sam Wees, and uh, he'll be introduced by Christina Cudney. Please. <laughs> now it's right. Way to go. Hello. My name is Christina Cudney, and I'm an MBA student originally from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. It is my pleasure to introduce our fourth and final inductee into the 2014 College of Business and Economics role of distinguished alumni. In 1957, Samuel H. Weiss earned his business degree from West Virginia University. After serving as an officer in the Air Force, he returned to WVU to earn his Master of Business Administration. Finally, he received his PhD in Business and Applied Economics from the University of Pennsylvania. In 1969, he was named the West Virginia Insurance Commissioner. Following that opportunity, he was the general manager for the National Flood Insurers Association for three years. Weiss has taught at Davis and Elkins College, the University of Florida, George Washington University, Hartford University, and Eastern Kentucky University. In 1988, he became the president and CEO of American College in Pennsylvania until his retirement in 2003. He and his wife, Ellen, now reside in Wayne, Pennsylvania. Please join me in welcoming Samuel Weiss into the role of distinguished alumni. Thank you, Christina. I want to thank those who are responsible for my selection for this honor because it truly is an honor for me to be here this evening to receive this recognition. It's a particular honor for me because my family history is an example of the vital role that West Virginia University has played in the education of those born in this state. In 1901, my great-grandfather moved his family from the Elkhorn Mountains in Grant County to Morgantown because he wanted his five children to have the opportunity to attend West Virginia University. My father was born on a farm on the hills uh, above Cassville, which is just west of Morgantown, and he lived with his grandmother after both his father and his grandfather died. She was so determined that he was going to get a graduate to graduate from West Virginia University that she bought him a Model A Ford to get from the farm to his classes in town. He graduated with a degree in agriculture in 1930 and after earning a graduate degree he returned as a college professor in the College of Agriculture. I grew up around this university. When I graduated from high school in 1953, I never questioned going anywhere else except West Virginia University. During my career, I have been associated with several colleges and universities, and as a result of this experience, I have a few thoughts about the college education that I would like to briefly share with you this evening. The first one of these, and the other uh, is recognized have, have really, uh, I think, made reference to what I'm going to say, is the education is, uh, I think, extremely reasonable and cost available, and that's why I'm so partial to state universities, especially to in-state students. But these schools also give the valuable opportunity to be part of this highly diverse population that prepares them very well for the real world that they're going to soon enter. 
State universities educate a cross-section of the country's young people, and that's the, re the way it should be. My second thought is that I believe the most valuable professors are those who enjoy teaching and that they're good at it. There are those who enjoy the interaction with students and they take a personal interest in them. I know the academic environment can make a very good case for the importance of research and publishing as well as consulting. And I understand this. But universities that fail to emphasize good teaching are not giving students what they need and deserve. I do think it's possible for a good professor to have all the criteria because they need not be mutually uh, exclusive. My third and my final thought relates to online education. As president for 15 years of one of the first academically accredited distance education institutions in the United States, I'm a strong believer in the value of online education. I think it will continue to become more effective as students improve their techniques and delivery uh, are developed. But it will never replace those benefits that come from classroom teaching. And I want to really tell you how much I got out of classroom teaching. Because when I was a student at West Virginia University, I had a professor who was first and foremost a very good teacher. His name was Fred Wright, and he taught insurance, a subject not looked upon by academics as particularly scholarly or rigorous, but no one can deny that it's indispensable to individuals in the business world. Fred liked teaching and the interaction with his students. And I called Fred when I returned from my tour of duty as an Air Force navigator because I had no idea what kind of career I wanted to pursue. Fred's suggestion, which I followed, was to re was return to WVU, enroll in a newly created MBA program that was then called the College of Business of Commerce. He later recommended me for a three-year S.S. Hebner Fellowship at the University of Pennsylvania's Wharton School, which I received. A few years later, he was instrumental in my becoming insurance commissioner of West Virginia. So no one had more influence on my career than Fred Wright. So that's the point that I want to add to the importance and I think the future of online education. There is simply no way that you can replace the interaction between a faculty member and a student without having them in the classroom. And that is, in my judgment, irreplaceable. And that's why I think that we will continue to see online education as being extremely important. But the classroom teaching is something that will never go away because of the dimension that it adds that cannot be replaced. So these are the three thoughts that I have about college education. And I want to leave them with you. And again, I deeply appreciate this honor, and I thank those who did, uh, uh, were instrumental in my receiving this award because it is extremely, extremely gratifying for me to receive it. I am most appreciative to all of you. Thank you. <clears throat> in closing, these four new inductees in the B&E role of distinguished alumni are perfect examples that hard work coupled with a quality degree can propel a person into a successful career, locally, nationally, and internationally. They are also fantastic role models for our students. I often tell students that they are the future inductees into this honored and cherished uh, group. Thank you very much for coming. I appreciate very much uh, your time uh, to join us tonight. These are very special people.